everyone. This is Madam Violet Ndege, School of Business and Economics, Mount Kenya University, Department of Management. I'm here to introduce to you a unit titled Introduction to Business Studies, BBM 1101. Welcome to our class today. So, what we are going to look at today is the business environment. And you remember last time we talked about the business itself and what is an environment. I can take you through what it was before we go into the detail of what is a business environment. So last time we talked about a business and we said it is any economical activity that is done in order to gain profits or to grow or to survive in the market. So those are the objectives of a business environment that we previously talked about. And now when we bring it together and we join the name environment, we are looking at the surrounding of this business. How does this business operate? What is the surrounding within this business? That is the environment. That is why we need to look at the business environment now because we already know what is a business and what is an environment. So when we now go into looking at the business environment, we are looking at the surrounding of a business, where the business exists. Because you know, a business cannot exist in isolation. A business has to exist in a given locality. It has to exist in a given place. And this place has to have the internal and the external environment. So the business environment in general as a student, what you need to understand is a business environment is a set of factors that are going to affect your business either internally or externally. That is what we talk about when we are looking at the business environment. So the next thing that we will look at, what are these characteristics of a business environment? Because we have said a business environment is the surrounding of that business and we have external and internal. And now we have to look at the characteristics and the reasons unto why we are looking at a business environment. And these are the characteristics or the features. In an exam scenario, sometimes we ask you the business features. And sometimes we can ask the characteristics of a business environment. So kindly understand that when we are talking about the features and the characteristics, it's one and the same thing. So we are looking at the characteristics or the features of a business environment. And number one, we will say it is dynamic. Why do we say that a business is dynamic? It is because it keeps on changing. Eh? The surrounding of that business keeps on changing each time and every place where you are starting your business. Mostly we advise that when you are coming up with a business, you must look at the environment itself because you have to get profit and you have to sustain yourself in the market. So the dynamic part of it is that the business is keeping on changing from one time to another because of the surrounding in it. That is why we have to analyze the environment first before we go into doing this business. Sometimes people forget to analyze the environment and they keep on getting losses. But when you look at the dynamic, you're looking at the changes in the environment in terms of the factors that we are going to look at today. So the dynamic part of it is the changing environment within the business. That is what you are expected to understand. Then another thing is, another characteristic or another feature is it is complex. Why do we say it is complex? It is interrelated in that this business, when you start it, there are so many factors that will lead it into continuity or into losses or into profits. So being complex meaning it has many sources of operation within it. And this complex part of it is that you have to have the resources, you have to have the capital, you have to ensure you know your competitors. So when you look at the complex aspect of the business, that is the characteristic or a feature of a business. If you don't understand that it is complex, then you will look it at it in a very narrow way and you will end up getting losses. That is number two, which is our characteristic or our feature. Then we have number three, which is uncertainty. 
uncertainty. What do we call uncertainty? We are looking at the fact that we don't know what tomorrow holds. Like today we are in the COVID-19 era where we don't know whether most businesses will pick up or not. So it keeps on giving you the aspect of predicting the future. So the environment keeps on changing. The environment keeps on giving you a prediction. So as a business person, you need to ensure that you know that this business can change at one point. So that is the surrounding in terms of the uncertainty, in terms of the features. Then we have number four feature, which is specific and general factor forces specific and general forces. So what do we talk about specific and general forces? These are those forces that make you, these are those forces that make you as a business person look at your business whether it will succeed. And which are these forces? We call them specific or general because these forces will determine the productivity of your business. So the general or the specific for forces will go a wide way in all businesses. That's why we call it general or specific. And why do we call it that way? Because all these businesses will be hindered with this kind of policies that have been set. For example, if we talk about general, I've given you an example of a government policy. When government policies come along, they affect almost all the businesses. Eh? Like now we have the lockdown. It will affect almost all the businesses. So those are general factors that can affect your business and it will affect other businesses. Even it will affect your competitors. And who are competitors? Competitors are those people who do the same business as you are doing, who are participating in the same type of business that you are engaging yourself in. So another thing is the totality of the external forces. That is also a characteristic or a feature the totality of the external forces. What do we call it? We are looking at the total sum of the forces within the organization, the external forces. And these external forces is what we are going to look at in broad so that you understand exactly when we talk about the total totality of external forces, what it means. What it means. Internal environment. So when we talk about the internal environment, we are looking at the factors that affect the business internally. And we are going to look at the 6M. I like using the acronym 6M because it's easy for you to remember in an exam or whenever you want to do a business. So the 6M, the first M stands for man. And when we talk about man here, we are categorizing it into human resource. The man aspect, the concept in it that you should understand is the human resource. The human resource that is being used in that organization or in that business that you are starting. Remember that we have different types of businesses. And when we come up with these different types of businesses, we have to have human resource to work for you. Even if it's a sole proprietorship type of business, you can employ people to work for you. So that is the human resource in it and it is internally. So you need to ensure that you have appropriate human resource. You have human resource that has skills in line with the business that you want to come up with. In line with the business that you want to come up with. So when you want to come up with this business, you bring in, if it's an accountant, you bring in somebody who has the skills in line with accounting. If you want to bring in a marketer, then you will bring in somebody who has gone through a school and has schooled and know the marketing concept in it so that at least your business can run well because if you decide and put somebody in a different field then you will not have the skills to run that business well you will might end up getting lost you can imagine taking somebody in the marketing department and placing that person who has gone through marketing eh? unit in marketing or skills or a course in marketing and you take this person into the IT. This person will not be productive. So that is the internal environment. So you bring in people who are productive in line with the skills that you are expected to come with in your business or in your organization. Then number two M is the marketing. 
marketing resources or marketing aspect. So what is marketing? This is creating awareness of your products and services. So also in a business, we don't start a business minus having to create awareness of this business. If you start a business, uh, if you start a business and you don't create awareness of this business, then you will not get customers. You have to create awareness by ensuring that you bring in the marketing aspect in it. So it becomes internal. You employ people in line with marketing skills and these people will go out and advertise yeah, do advertisements on TV, do adver advertisements on print media, so that you organization is well known. People are conversant with the business that you are dealing with, so that you get profit. Because the main aim of starting a business is to have profit and to maximize your sustainability. So if you create awareness, you will end up getting more clients or more consumers to your products. That is the second M. Then the third M is machinery. When we look at machinery, we are talking about the machines, the plant, the end plant within that organization. If you are starting a business, for example, if you are starting a business in terms of print media or you want to start, come up with newspapers, for example, we have the nation media, we have TV 47. When you go into such kind of business, then you have to look at what are the machines that you have established that will assist you as an individual, as an owner, as a shareholder of that business to ensure that you get clients or you get your productivity to be efficient. So if the machines have come in, then you have a good plant. We are not talking about plant of animals. We are talking about infrastructures that you have set in that organization so that you bring the productivity concept in your organization or in your business. So that is the machinery. It is internal. So those are some of the things that you have to use when you are starting a business or in continuity of your business. That is machinery. Then we have another M. We said we are looking at six M. So we have six of them. Another one is management. When we talk about management, we are looking at the concept of planning, organizing, controlling, directing. Or this concept has to be enhanced in your business. If you enhance this concept of management in your business, then you will be able to manage the people that you have employed, the resources that you have, and the machines that you have in that particular organization. So the management aspect is you are coming up with a board of directors. Remember, in the hierarchy of management, you have top managers, the CEOs, who create policies for your organization who create policies for your business. You have to employ people that have skills in line with the management concept so that your business can grow and outshine other businesses. So that is another M. Then we have the fourth, the fourth fifth, fifth M, which is money. Money. When we talk about money, it is finance, the cash that you have in within the organization, the finance that you have. So that finance that you have to start or the capital that you have to start your business, it is internally. You have to ensure that you have sourced funds. If you don't have money to start, go for loans. If you don't have loans, borrow from friends. If you don't have money, do a project and raise money so that you can start your business. So you have to have it internally within your business. That is what we call money. Then the last M is the mis miscellaneous activities. So those are other activities that can come in within the organization. Any other activities that come in within the organization. So internal environment is a very critical aspect in any business before you start or during the time when you are working in that business. So that is what you are expected to understand because it will affect the performance and the growth of your business. If you don't look at the six M's that we have talked about, then you cannot maintain the performance of your business. That is what you are expected to look at when you analyze it in terms of the 6M, which is an acronym to enable you remember on time. Then we have a diagram here 
that illustrates the internal environment and other factors. You see, we have the business organization in the middle, then the, out of the business organization, then we have all these other factors within the environment that can affect your organization or that can affect your business. So we look at the value system. When we talk about value system, we are looking at the ethical concept within the business. The ethical concept within the business. What is the ethical concept in the business that you are doing? What are those values within the business that you are doing that will enable that business to grow? So you have to have the legal aspect in it. You have to ensure that that business is running with the ethical values that are expected for that business so that you don't have the environment or the government against your, your business. So another thing is there we have the missions and objectives. What are missions and objectives? They are established within the business. These are established within the business for the purpose of ensuring that the business is maintained. So the mission and objective is when you are looking at the purpose of the business. For example, you are starting a, an, a firm which is a financial institution like the one we have for example, if it's equity, you want to have maybe clients come in. So your mission will be you want to increase the productivity of clients and the amount of transactions that you make within that organization. So you will have it as your mission or your objective of coming up with such a financial institution. So that mission or that motto, if we use an example of Mount Kenya University, we have our previous motto which was scaling the heights of education. When you look at that motto of scaling the heights of education, you are looking at the concept of going above board, doing exceptional things. So the scaling the heights of education in Mount Kenya University makes it a brand, makes it attract more people because it is bringing in the aspect of scaling the heights, scaling the heights of education because nobody would not want to scale the heights of education so you are maintaining your brand so out of the mission or the purpose because that is our purpose out of that purpose it will ensure that your organization will run well that is the mission and objectives it is within and that chart also looks at the human resource which we have already talked about then we have the unions you look at the organizations that you have formed within that business those unions, for example, trade unions, those ones that come in within the organization that will assist your business to run. In case we have issues with people are having problems, conflicts within themselves, because you are dealing with human beings. Remember, this is a business where you are dealing with people. So you have to have a union that takes care of the welfare of the employees, takes care of the welfare of the customers, all those things. So we have the business organization. Then we have another thing in the internal environment, we have organizational structures. What are organization structures? These are hierarchies. The hierarchy of an organization. When you were in high school, we had the head teacher, senior head teacher, that hierarchy of the organization until the point where we have the class prefect. The hierarchy shows you the command, the unit of command within the organization. In fact, if you don't have the command hierarchy, which is the organizational structure within your business, then who will be the boss in that business? and who will direct the other people in that business. So the organization structure gives you direction. It gives you a way in which you are expected to run your business. It will ensure that the roles and responsibilities are indicated for each individual that you have already recruited in the human resource concept. So these roles and responsibilities will be illustrated in the organization structure. So this organization structure will assist internally because it is set by the internal factor in that organization, meaning the directors and the management that we talked about in the 6M will come up with an organization structure. And this organization structure will be within the organization. It can only operate within the organization. So through that organization structure, it will assist your business to grow or your organization to grow because there is direction, there is command, all those aspects. 
So another thing is the physical resources which we have categorized in our 6M as the machineries. So all the resources that you are expected to use. Then we have the corporate culture. What is the corporate culture? You are looking at if it's, a if it's a, an organization, you are looking at what is their way of doing things. So you are looking at the way of doing things within your organization or within your business. You create a culture. If people are supposed to report to duty, you know very well from eight to five people should come to, to work. So it is a culture, a way of doing things within the organization. So you create those roles or those rules within the organization that will govern it. If, because if you, you, you look at the most corporate societies or most organizations, they come up with brands. Sometimes we have brands, even we have our own brand. When you use it, yeah, you use it within the organization. It is a way of doing things. Maybe on Fridays you have a brand of your t-shirts coming up with them in the organization. So out of that, people will have the awareness of your products or your organization. Remember, business can be goods and services. So if it is Mount Kenya University or if it is an, a bank, it is lending services. But if it's goods and sub goods, then those are tangible items. For example, we can say your phone, we can say your laptop, something, your pen, your books, something that you can touch. It is also that is a, bi a business. So that is how we analyze the internal environment. Make sure you understand the internal environment because the next thing we are going to look at is the external environment. So most questions that we ask in the internal environment, we keep on asking, what are the factors that can facilitate the business growth internally? Those are some of the questions. Then number two, we can ask you questions. Eh? Discuss or explain the factors that affect an organization internally. Or we can also frame it in a way that scan, scan the environment, eh? scan an environment, an internal environment of a business. So those are some of the few questions that we get in terms of the internal environment. Understand the internal environment well because it is also important. So the next thing that we are going to look at is the external environment. We are going to look at the external environment. So when we look at the external environment, there is also an acronym that we use in the external environment so that you can remember it well, which is PESTEL, which stands for political, economical, social, technological, and legal factors within the organization. So all those aspects will facilitate the external. We say the external is the outside. Anything that is uncontrollable by the business, it's outside the business which will facilitate the business growth, which will facilitate the establishment of the business or the existence of the business. So that is the external environment. So when we look at our chart here, you can see the legal environment, which is outside. We have the economical environment. We have technological. We have global. We have social. And we have competitive environment. So we are going to discuss all of them, starting with the first one, which is the economic environment. So economic environment, what should come into your mind is you are looking at the condition of the economy. Right now, where is Kenya in the economy? What is our condition in the economy? How are we operating in Kenya these days? Eh? At what time are businesses closing up? Eh? What is our habit of buying or purchasing? What is the power of purchasing within the clients? How many people are still working during this COVID time? What is the rate of unemployment? That is an economic environment. You are, looking, you are looking at this environment to determine if you have starting a business in Kenya, then you have to look at the economy of Kenya. How does Kenya look like in terms of the economy? Eh? How much money do people have in their pockets? That is now the amount of money that you have within your pocket, which will illustrate the factor of spending. 
So the economic aspect has to be looked upon in any business because if you don't look at the economic aspect in this business, you are not going to do anything in terms of sales. Remember any business we want to make profits, we want to sell, we have to have more clients. So if people don't have money in their pockets, then they cannot come in and buy your product. So that is the main reason why we look at the economic environment and how it is supposed to affect you as a business owner. So you have to look at how people are spending. For example, we have during strikes, we have our teachers maybe sometimes strike. During strike, they are not paid. So you will not focus on brands that will look at the teachers because you know very well at that time they don't have money. So as a business person or as a, an entrepreneur, you need to ensure that you understand the economic environment. And who is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a person who has an idea to start a business. So because we are doing business and because we are analyzing the environment of a business, then we have also to understand the concept of this particular business. That the business has to be started with individuals. And these individuals that involve them in business are owners and we also have the entrepreneurs, we have the experts, and we have the management concept in it for it to be a business. So those are just roughly the members that need to be involved in a business, which should relate to your economic environment, because these members need to attract customers. It needs to attract consumers. If you don't attract consumers, then you are prone to get losses in your business. That is the economic environment. Look at the time in which we are now. If you are starting a business, for example, of selling masks, and you want to sell masks according to how many people will buy them in terms of the habits, because these days you can't go outside minus a mask. You have to be in a mask to keep safe at home. So you need to ensure that you have a mask, you have a sanitizer. So if you are a business entrepreneur and you know this is the opportunity to go into the economy and sell, don't say that the economic level of Kenya at this point is not good, so I can't do a business. No, it varies from one business to another. That's why we are business students and we need to understand the entrepreneurial concept that we have to have the opportunity that is coming in which will assist you to do another business. If you are seeing that at this point you can't do your business, then you will end up coming up with a different opportunity like the one that I have illustrated to you so that you don't look at the buying habits and say, now if I am selling something else and people are not buying it, I'm going to stop my business. No. Remember that you are analyzing the environment because you are a business or you are an entrepreneur in that particular field. So the economic concept, you are looking at the buying power of these individuals. That is what you are expected to understand in economics. Then we have the legal environment. The legal environment, you are looking at the laws that have been set. The laws that have been set in that company. The business that you are starting right now. Which type of laws have been set for it? For example, if you want to start a private organization, if you want to start a private university, if you want to start anything to do with education, you have to go to the Commission of University Education to have your, your courses accredited. Or if you want to start something like an hotel industry, you have to ensure that you have the laws that govern hotel industry. You have to ensure that you can manage with the laws that have been set because you can't start a business minus looking at the laws that have been set. If you don't look at these laws that have been set, maybe if it is the constitution, what does the constitution say concerning your business? What does the business laws say? What does our courts say? So you have to be somebody who is able to understand all the laws that exist. What are the law of administrators? So you have to understand what is the law that is governing the type of business that you are beginning. 
So we have different types of laws that you have to look at and ensure that you are not caught behind bars. Because if you don't follow the laws according to that government in place, then you will find yourself in a problem. And that will not be a business. Maybe your business will be terminated. So that is what you are expected to understand in the legal environment. Like now we have laws that have been set. So if you don't follow them, you will find yourself in, in problems. Eh? Laws that were set the other day that our lockdown is at 8 p.m. If you don't follow that, then you will find yourself at problems with the government. So you need to ensure you know the laws that exist. Then another environment is the technological environment that we have there. The technological environment, we are looking at the concept of technology. What is the changing technology in our society or in our country at this point? We are looking at the technological concept in terms of change in technology. When you are changing in your technology, then you have also to upgrade the changing of your staffs or your employees. So a good example that I can give you is the universities and even the colleges, even the primary schools that are existing now. Eh? We are changing because of COVID. We are changing into digital learning, which we are doing right now. So when you move from the analog aspect to digital aspect, you are coming up with that concept of technology. So your business has to ensure that the technological concept is looked upon. Because if you don't train your employees to go through the technological upgrading, then you will find yourself out of the market and your competitors will be on your neck. You know, you have to outshine your competitors. So our example there, we have the digital books that we have in our library in Mount Kenya University. We have our online classes that are going on. These are things that have come up because of change in technology. So you have to ensure that you have the knowledge in terms of computer, you have the knowledge in terms of the technology changing. So if you don't understand the technological environment, you will find yourself out of the market. That is technology. Then we have the social environment. Social environment, we are looking at the culture of individuals within a given society. So you are looking at the culture, the beliefs of individuals within a given society. So before you establish this business, you have to find out which people are you targeting, which are your customers that you are targeting in that particular business. Who are the people that you are targeting? What are their attitudes? What are their values? What are their beliefs? What are their wants? That is what you are expected to look at. If you look at the social environment, for example, like if you want to establish maybe KFC, KFC would like maybe to establish their, their products in uh, India. Eh? They will look at the environment in India. What does the environment look like, the external environment in terms of social culture? Eh? What is their culture like? If their culture does not believe on meat, then don't go there and set a KFC eh, for those people. So you are expected to understand that. That is what you are supposed to know. What is their culture like? If it's Northeastern, you have to know. You can't go there and start selling mint cuts eh, because you have to look at the culture. Which kind of clothes do these people wear? Hmm? If they are putting on buibuis, then you will go ahead and put on and sell and bring a manufacturing industry that comes in with the clothes depending on their culture. So even you'll go down into the ethical standards within that organization. That is what we call the social environment. You look at their beliefs, their norms, all those things. That is how you look at a social environment. If you look at this social environment the way I'm telling you, you will not miss if you become a business owner or if you are a director, if you have somebody who can assist the organization when things are not going right or within before you start the business. They will easily know that this is what we are supposed to do. Even still under the social environment, we can have examples of social class. Hmm? For example, you can have people sell tea eh, in a small kiosk outside your university or outside your college. 
these people are selling tea, the same milk was distributed to your, your school, is the same milk that has been distributed to five-star hotels. But the milk goes there and changes price. Why do you think it changes price? Why do you think it has to change price? It's because of the social concept in it. Because you have to look at the kind of people that are coming in. If you sell in a five-star hotel and you sell tea at five bob, even if that tea was good, nobody will buy it. They will look at it at, as low quality. So as a business person, you need to know the social class of people that you are targeting. If you are targeting people that are in five-star hotels, then you have to increase your price. You have also to increase the value of those items that you are selling there. So that is the concept of social environment. If you understand that, then you will find yourself doing the best thing or the right thing in your business. Hope we are still together. Then we have the political environment. Then we have the political environment. So what is the political environment? We are looking at the environment in which you place your business. If you place your business in a given environment, then you are expected to ensure that you know the political condition in that environment. What is the government in that environment? What is the political instability within that environment? You remember in Kenya during the 2007, we had so many wars, we didn't have peace. At that point, you could not come up with business and mix with other communities because you will find a problem. But right now, now that we are at peace, then you can do business wherever you want to do. So if there is political instability within a given area, it will make you not do your business well. So understand the political environment within that particular area. If you are starting an organization in Kenya, ensure you know what is the duration, what is the period like. You cannot start a business in a period where you know it is political instability is not good and you expect to get clients and you start targeting people who are not for a particular group. You will not get clients. Just the same way when you do elections in your schools. You cannot go in and start supporting the other person and expect to sell the same product to the other individual. So that is the political environment that you are expected to look at and how it is supposed to work. Then we have another type of environment which is the global environment. Global is now we are going international. We are going international. If we are going international, then we are expected to know which kind of goods are allowed to go international. Which products can we sell and services can we offer internationally. You will understand that what is the level in which your items should come in with. If you are importing cars eh, from Japan, you need to know what age eh, are these cars supposed to come in with so that you don't bring second-hand cars that cannot sell if you are doing a business of second-hand cars. So that is what you are expected to look at. And you have to look at the policies of those organizations or those countries vis a -vis your own country. That's why you see most of the time you hear Kenya has made MOUs with another country so that they can have their economy grow or they can interchange in terms of buying of goods and services. Even now when borders are closed, sometimes we find problem. So that is what you are expected to understand when it comes to the global environment. Then another thing that we should look at is the natural environment. Natural environment. What are these natural environment? In the EPSTEL acronym that we were using, we had the last point being the environment. What is this natural environment that we, we have? You are looking at the floods. Eh? We are looking at different natural resources that are available. When you look at the natural environment, you have to look at it in line with the business that you are starting. If you are starting a business, you have to ensure that you know which is the location where you have placed 
this business so that the natural concept is looked upon. If floods come along, what will happen? This is where now as a business person you need to go in to have covers and insurance projects so that in case anything happens, you are compensated. So the natural environment has to be analyzed and this will lead to you coming up with the insurance covers that we have for various organizations. So for you to be well established in the business, then you have to look at the natural environment that exists. Which type of natural environment exists at a particular time? Which ones are positive? Which ones are negative? If it's during the rainy season, then you will come up with jackets, you'll come up with brands, you come up with umbrellas that you will want to sell. So you will look at their positive and negative aspects in the natural environment that can affect your business. You have to look at them so that it enables you get profit because we said for you to be well in an organization or to be in a good state in that particular organization, you have to ensure that you get your profits, you have to ensure that you sustain yourself so that your competitors don't come on your way so that you are not outside from that particular. And then we have various questions that we come up with. Those are the questions that sometimes we can have in our, in our business environment classes. We can have what did, for example, the activities that are there on our screen, which looks at what did you learn about this activity in terms of business environment. So we have questions like, for example, explain to us the external environment within your business. For example, we can have you a case study which states that you have been employed by, you have been employed by Mount Kenya University as a marketing manager. Eh? Explain to the board of directors what is the viable ways of establishing and attracting more clients or more students to your courses. So that is a, a case study which you have to look at so that it can analyze now. We are try, trying to derive the scanning of the environment, how we scan our environment in terms of the external environment, in terms of the internal environment. So remember, you can't be employed eh, as a director if you don't know how to scan an environment. And remember that business is a way of life, like we spoke the other time, that business is a way of life. Without business, you cannot make it. Without business, there is nothing that can happen. Remember, even the medical part of it has to bring in medicine, but it has to be sold to this side. We have to buy them to come in. Eh? Even the drugs that are being bought now for COVID have to be bought. So that is business, have to be bought to come into Kenya so that we can also sustain ourselves. So that is now a way of life. You need to understand that business is a way of life and we can't live without business. So understand the business environment that we have and look at the internal as we have explained them, look at the external as we have explained them. So in summary, what you need to understand is internal, you look at the 6M, which is the man, which we said man, marketing, management, and we also said miscellaneous activities. We also said we are looking at the concept of marketing. So all those, that is the 6M. Then now if you are analyzing the external environment, understand the political, that is pastel, political, economical, social, and technological aspects that we have talked about. So out of understanding all those two and the examples that I've given you, I think you will understand that business is a way of life and you can make business wherever you go. But if you decide to go to the U.S. and start business, you can start business only after scanning the environment. So those are some of the examples that we use when we want to scan the environment. Eh? If you are asked a question in line with scanning the environment, those are the aspects that you are expected to look at. You are expected to scan the environment. You are expected to look at the global, social, technological, legal, economical, political aspects in the environment. So the other aspect that we did not mention in the external environment is the research and development. Remember, you can't do business minus research. Research is finding out. 
finding out a solution for a given issue. So you have to research. It becomes internal because you have to research. Yeah? You have to have a research department within your organization to find out what exactly is needed yeah? in terms of your customers. What are the tests? What are the preferences that are needed within that particular business for it to grow? So you find out, you can send out your questionnaires or you can decide and send out your employees yeah, who can go out and do research and find out which products are viable. For example, if it's a university, you can find out which courses are good in the market, yeah, which courses are profitable, which courses can students get out of here and get their employment. Yeah, because we are not in school to stay there for all the time. We need to finish up and get ourselves something to do. So we have to go out and find out which, biz, which kind of courses are related to the environment where you, you are. So that's why we keep on updating our courses even in Mount Kenya. We need to update those courses so that they are in line with whatever we are doing as an organization or as whatever we are doing as a business. That is the research and development. We equally have the operation concept. So the operation where we have the day-to-day -day activities within the organization. Then we have a department that looks at the day-to-day -day activities within the organization. How are the employees working? What is the performance like? Eh? What are the factors that are facilitating their performance in day-to-day -day activities? At what rate are we in? If we are a sales team, what have we produced right now? What are our outcomes that have come in? So that one becomes the internal part of this. You see, at the blue point in this diagram, we have the internal environment. Then outside it, now we have the external environment. So according to the diagram that we have there, on the board. So I think you have understood what we are expected to do. And then sometimes we have, we have something there, marketing stroke sales. There is marketing stroke sales. So marketing is related to sales because marketing is creating awareness and sales is bringing in the outputs so or bringing in more cash or more money to the organization. So you need to understand that all those departments are very necessary when you are starting a business or within the time that you are in business. Remember even now people were found when they have no finances like the one that we have in that diagram. Hmm? They didn't have money to sustain them in 2020, hmm? to sustain their employees in 2020 so they would not continue. Businesses had to close down. But now we have understood the concept of environment and we have to know that even at that point you have to have kept some money that is being used for emergency or in case anything comes up. So we have the financial aspect in terms of day-to-day -day operations or we can look at them in terms of the capital that we use to start our business. That is what you are expected to understand. So that is what you are expected to understand and at the end of it we should understand that a business environment, we should understand for the success of every business it depends on the adapt adapting of itself to the environment or the functions in the environment. We need to understand that when we are doing business, we have to look at the scanning of the environment, we have to look at the analyzing of the internal, external environment so that the business can run and get profits and maximize yourself and sustain yourself in the market since it is a way of life. So that is what we had for today. Be blessed. And we are saying we will meet next time. Be blessed. Keep safe. Stay safe. Stay home. Thank you. Sanitize and wash your hands.